Hey guys, I'm going to take a look at what I think is the most intriguing elemental building block circuit used in electronics. Well, my past videos I talked about current and voltage sources, current mirrors, you know, as a part of the amplifier circuit I was working on, the, you know, the discrete circuit if you've been following that series of videos. I think this is interesting because you may not quite understand up front how it works, but it's very versatile and it's used quite a bit. Well, it's called the differential amplifier, also known as the LTP or long tailed pair. What you have is a couple of transistor amplifiers. They're connected together into the tail here, which is how it gets that name and that's simply a current source that could be an actual you know current source active current source or simply a resistor now in actual circuits you might see additional components which are used to improve the gain and performance of it in other ways you might see it just as it is here and I'll set it up on the breadboard and we'll play around with it too, see how it works. Now you might see it reversed. It'll be like this, but instead of NPN, you'll see PNP transistors used. But it's just set up the way needed for, you know, whoever designed the circuit. The circuit came about back in the 30s, you know, in the valve or vacuum tube days. It was used in linear computers because it can do basic linear math. It can sum and differentiate voltages. And, you know, so it could be used in analog computers. And apparently its switching characteristics is good that it can be used in digital type computers as well. So back in those days it was used in the early digital computers that used the vacuum tubes. You often find this circuit used today in the front end of discrete audio amplifiers, integrated circuits, of course the ubiquitous op amp and even uh, integrated circuit type uh, power amplifiers like the LM3886 and the 1875, even the LM386, the little tiny uh, battery powered chip amp uses the differential amplifier. And I'm not a guitar player, but I guess it's used in push-pull type valve or tube amplifiers. It makes a good performing um, phase inverter since of course you have to invert the phase to one of the tubes the output tubes now the fun part how does this work a lot of people don't quite get how it does but I think I can describe it in a simple way that makes sense well if you remember I said this part of the circuit is a constant current source a lot of times you see a resistor not a perfect current source but you know it'll work but in this case we'll say we have an active current source which sets the current at one milliamp so no matter what one milliamp is going to flow through there well if we have match transistors and all the components are good tolerance and everything what happens is the current comes and splits through each side equally so you have a half a milliamp on this side half a milliamp on this side and they come together and it's one milliamp now you have to remember that these transistors are biased they're turned on a little bit to conduct I'm not showing those components out of sake of simplicity. Now let's say I put a voltage onto the base of this transistor and turn it on a little bit more 
and we'll say that now it's conducting 0.75 milliamps. Remember before each side is 0.5 but we turn this on a little bit more it's drawing 0.75. Well what happens this side is taking more current than this side so this side drops to 0.25 because you have to remember it always has to equal one milliamp so if you take more the remaining has to come from this side now if we put a signal on here that went down or less this side would be drawing 0.25 for example and to equal one we have to take 0.75 milliamps from this side current on this side went up. So now if it's a sine wave you see that this side over here is doing opposite of this side. So in other words if this, we put a sine wave here and the current went up on this side the current's going to go down causing an inverse so hopefully that makes sense. It's just a simple matter of current sharing. Alright, well enough of that. Let's actually take a look at a circuit. Okay, I have the circuit set up here on a breadboard. Ignore this up here. Everything below the black wire is the differential amplifier. This is another circuit from another video. And, well, it's pretty much set up the way I have it in the drawing, except I have a couple resistors for biasing the transistors. I'm using a split power supply, which simplifies the biasing, so I don't have to set up a biasing network. And I have a coupling capacitor for the input. Now, because it's a differential amplifier, and the signal is inverted between the two amps. We'll take a look here if I scope the difference between the amplifiers. So let me hook that up. So I have my function generator here. I set, set it on uh, triangle wave mode. And I'm getting about a 3 volt RMS signal there. 2 volts per division. So we got a pretty large signal. And I'm measuring between these two points on the collectors. And because one wave is going up while one's going down, in a way it's kind of like a bridge amplifier because you get an increased signal. But normally, in most circuits, you take the signal off of one transistor. So if I connect one side of the scope to ground, now the output has decreased quite a bit. And if I take a look at, let me put the uh, scope on the input. Here's the input signal. You see it's very weak. 200 and some millivolts. So it is doing its job amplifying. Now I want to compare the outputs from each side of the amplifier. I want to see if it's actually inverting the signal. Problem is I don't have a asymmetrical waveform generator. But I found if I put a Schottky diode between the two outputs on my function generator, I do get kind of an asymmetrical waveform. You can see here it's kind of a, or a square wave that's tapered off. And the side with the most taper is the bottom. And I'm scoping the left transistor, and I'll move it over to the right side. And as you can see, now the side with the most taper has moved to the top. So it is actually flipping that waveform or inverting it. 
So it is performing as expected. Now, there's something interesting here. Because this is a constant current source, because, you know, as one's going up, one's going down, the effect should cancel out, and the voltage at this point should be zero. I shouldn't get any signal. Let's see what happens. So I move that down to that. I'm just using, that's my constant current source as a resistor. And of course, resistors are not perfect current sources. And we do get a little bit of signal. Everything is not perfect. Well, for one thing, some of the current from this is going into the uh, emitter and is part now part of that current and again not using a resistor is not perfect so you will get a little bit so I think that's what's going on there so if I perfected the circuit more I would get you know zero waveform at this point now let's take a look at how negative feedback corrects nonlinearities in an audio amplifier and I'm using the differential amplifier here to discuss this because that's the topic of the of this video even though that it works with other types of circuits as well now, I've added an amplifier diagram to it of course this is our front end of the amplifier the input signal goes here we from the collector we take off the signal that feeds the rest of the amplifier. In this case it's an audio amplifier driving a speaker. We take some of that output signal, run it through a resistor divider network and send some of the signal back. And this sets the gain and it also sends back you know errors in the signal that get corrected. This is pretty cool how it works. Well, it's checking and correcting for errors in our signal to give us a low distortion amplifier. And that's what negative feedback is all about, giving us a clean, undistorted signal. Well, in, in theory it is. In reality, you can never have per perfection, but you know it does come pretty close. So what we've done is put a closed loop in here, a feedback, it's just a closed loop. And within that loop, if something happens here, you know, tubes and transistors, they have what's known as a nonlinear transfer curve. You want to use them in their most linear portion, but still there's some residual nonlinearity, and that causes distortion. You want to correct that. How does this actually correct for that nonlinearity? Well, this is not really what happens, but I'll just pretend that this circuit here adds a notch at the top of the sine wave. So what happens is we send some of the signal back and we see or I should say, it sees that notch in the sine wave. Well, that's not what we put in an amplifier. We put in a nice, clean sine wave, but now we're getting this notch. Well, what happens in our differential amplifier, you have to remember that it's going to make an inverted signal on this side because we have a new different signal here. We have, I should say, components of that signal are different. We now have that notch showing up. So what happens is differential amplifier makes an opposite notch on this side and feeds it back into the amplifier. It's countering this effect. We had this negative notch, it made a positive notch sticks it back in. Well, what happens is it's correcting for that by opposing it 
making it equal and opposite so now what comes out is a nice clean sine wave again so I I hope that made sense I don't know if I explained that all all that great it wants whatever goes in to be exactly what comes out and that's how negative feedback works pretty much next is to continue on with this discrete amplifier build on the breadboard there goes my meter let me just turn that off or it's going to beep at me what I'm going to do is put this stage as a front end on this amplifier see how it's working and then we'll add negative feedback then I'll have to add some compensation I gotta stabilize it you know it's probably gonna oscillate because there's no compensation right now and after all of that hopefully we have a good amplifier circuit and there's the camera hog Snickers he's got to make his appearance in the videos well that's it folks thanks for watching